Hello everyone! I am Mrs. Leia May Ortiz San Miguel and I will be your grade 10 mathematics teacher. So our lesson for this day is about number patterns. At the end of this video, you will be able to first, analyze patterns and relationships. Second, generate patterns. Let's have first this simple activity. What will be the next number in the set of numbers 1, 5, 9, 13? If your answer is 17, your answer is correct. So what is the pattern? We just add 4 to the preceding term to get the next term. So 1 plus 4 is equal to 5. 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 plus 4 is 13. So to get the next number after 13, we just need to add 4. So 13 plus 4 is 17. The given set of numbers 1, 5, 9, 13, 17 is an example of sequence. What is a sequence? A sequence is a collection of objects that follow a certain rule or pattern. In mathematics, the collection of objects are the set of numbers. Each member of a sequence is called a term. In this example, there are 5 terms. We have 1, 5, 9, 13, and 17. The terms of a sequence are commonly written as a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, up to a sub n. Wherein, a sub 1 is the first term which is equal to 1, not all the time that the first term is equal to 1. It is just in our example. And a sub 2 is 5, which is the second term. a sub 3 or the third term is 9. a sub 4 or the fourth term is 13. And a sub 5 or the fifth term is 17. In this example, our last term is 17. If a sequence has a first term and last term, that is a finite sequence. So 1, 5, 9, 13, 17 is a finite sequence wherein 1 is the first term and 17 is the last term. A finite sequence may be defined more formally as a function f whose domain is the set of natural numbers 1, 2, 3, up to n. An infinite sequence is a sequence that has a first term and indefinite last term. So in this example, we have here 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, and it will be continued. It is denoted by these three dots called the ellipsis. These three dots denotes that the sequence will continue endlessly. That's why it is called infinite sequence. When the domain of a sequence is the entire set of natural numbers, then the sequence is said to be infinite. Can you determine the sixth term and nth term of the sequence 5, 8, 11, 14, 17? First is, to get the 6th term, we need to identify first the pattern. Correct! Just add 3 to the previous term to get the next term. 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 plus 3 is 11, 11 plus 3 is 14, and 14 plus 3 is 17. Now, how many terms do we have? First term, which is 5. Second term, which is 8. Third term, which is 11. Fourth term, which is 14. Fifth term, which is 17. 
So to get the 6th term or the term after 17, we just need to add 3. So 17 plus 3 is 20. Therefore, a sub 6 or the 6th term is equal to 20. Next is, we need to determine the nth term. The general term or the nth term of a sequence is an expression that generates the terms of the sequence or it is an explicit formula that determines any term of a sequence without knowing the previous terms. To determine the nth term or a sub n of a sequence, we may use pattern searching, guess and check, and working backward strategies. So again, the pattern here is adding by 3. So meaning, our a sub n has 3n. And for us to get the general term, we may use a sub 1, which is equal to 5. So following our formula 3n, 3 multiplied by 1 since we are using the first term. That's why n is equal to 1. So a sub 1 is equal to 3 times 1. And 3 times 1 is 3. And a sub 1 here is 5. But 5 is not equal to 3. So what should be added to 3 to get 5? Correct. We need to add 2 to 3 to get a result of 5. So meaning a sub n is equal to 3n plus 2. So let's try the second term if we're going to get 8 as an answer. So a sub 2, we just substitute n by 2 since we are using the second term. So a sub 2 is equal to 3 times 2 plus 2. a sub 2 is 8 and 3 times 2 is 6. So we have 8 is equal to 6 plus 2. And 6 plus 2 is equal to 8. So meaning our general term is a sub n is equal to 3n plus 2. Let's have this example. Find the general term of the sequence 4, 11, 18, 25, 32. We need to find a pattern here. So the pattern here is, okay, adding 7 to the previous term to get the next term. So we have a sub n is equal to 7n. Let us use again the first term. So we have a sub 1 is equal to 7 times 1. And a sub 1 is equal to 4. 4 equals 7. So, what are we going to add or subtract to 7 to get positive 4? We need to subtract 3 so that 4 is equal to 4. So, meaning we have a sub n is equal to 7n minus 3. So, let us use the fourth term to check if the general term or the nth term is correct. a sub 4 is equal to 7 times 4 minus 3. And a sub 4 here is 25. Let us simplify 7 times 4. 7 times 4 is 28. So 28 minus 3 is 25. And a sub 4 or the fourth term in our sequence is also 25. So therefore, the general term or the nth term of this sequence is a sub n is equal to 7n minus 3. For the next example, we have find the general term of the sequence 28, 24, 20, 16, and 12. So the pattern here is subtracting 4 from the previous term to get the next term. So we have a sub n is equal to negative 4n. Now, let us use again the first term. So, we have a sub 1 is equal to negative 4 times 1. a sub 1 here or the first term is 28. 
sa 28 equals negative 4. So, 1 should be added to negative 4 to get 28. Correct. We should add 32. So, that 28 is equal to 28. So, the general term here is a sub n is equal to negative 4n plus 32. You may check if the general term or the nth term is correct by using one of the given terms of this sequence. You may use the second term, third term, fourth term, or fifth term. Now, let's proceed with example number 3. Find the general term of the sequence 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Analyze the pattern. Okay, the pattern here is getting the square of the counting numbers. So we have 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, and 5 squared. So our general term is a sub n is equal to n squared. So, when we substitute 1, so we have a sub 1 is equal to 1 squared. And 1 squared is 1. If the second term, a sub 2 is equal to 2 squared. So, 2 squared is 4. And so on and so forth. Now, we are done with analyzing the patterns. How about in number 4? Find the first five terms of the sequence with general term a sub n is equal to 2n minus 5. So, we're going to reverse the process. Earlier, given the terms of a sequence, we need to find the general term. This time, given the general term, we're going to find the first five terms. To find the first five terms of this given general term, we just need to substitute 1 to get the first term. So, we have a sub 1 is equal to 2 times 1 minus 5. Simplify 2 times 1, we have a sub 1 is equal to 2 minus 5. And simplify 2 minus 5, the answer is negative 3. So, the first term here is negative 3. To get the second term, substitute n is equal to 2. So, a sub 2 is equal to 2 times 2 minus 5. And then, multiply 2 times 2, we have a sub 2 is equal to 4 minus 5. And, a sub 2 is equal to negative 1. So, the second term is negative 1. To get the third term, let us use n is equal to 3. So, a sub 3 is equal to 2 times 3 minus 5. a sub 3 is equal to 6 minus 5. Where did we get 6? From 2 times 3. And 6 minus 5 is 1. Therefore, the third term is 1. To get the fourth term, substitute n is equal to 4. So, we have a sub 4 is equal to 2 times 4 minus 5. Multiply 2 and 4, the answer is 8. So, we have a sub 4 is equal to 8 minus 5. Subtract 8 and 5, the answer is 3. So, the fourth term is 3. And to get the fifth term, Substitute n is equal to 5. So, a sub 5 is equal to 2 times 5 minus 5. Multiply 2 and 5, the answer is 10. So, a sub 5 is equal to 10 minus 5. And 10 minus 5 is equal to 5. Hence, the first 5 terms of the sequence with a sub n is equal to 2n minus 5 are negative 3, Negative 1, 1, 3, and 5. For the last example, 
find the first five terms and the tenth term of the sequence with general term a sub n is equal to 7n plus 1. So let us find first the first five terms. a sub 1 is equal to 7 times 1 plus 1. 7 times 1 is 7 and 7 plus 1 is equal to 8. So the first term is 8. Next, let us find the second term. So a sub 2 is equal to 7 times 2 plus 1. 7 times 2 is 14. And 14 plus 1 is equal to 15. So the second term is 15. Now, if the general term or the nth term is a linear equation, look for the coefficient of n. In this case, the numerical coefficient of n is 7. So, we're just going to add 7 to the previous term to get the next term. So, in this case, a sub 2 is 15. To get the third term, we're just going to add 7. So, 15 plus 7 is 22. That will be the third term. To get the fourth term, add 7 to 22. So, 22 plus 7 is 29. That will be the fourth term. And to get the fifth term, add 7 to 29. And that will be 36. After finding the first five terms, next is we're going to find the tenth term. To get the tenth term of the sequence, just substitute n is equal to 10. So we have a sub 10 is equal to 7 times 10 plus 1. 7 times 10 is 70. So 70 plus 1 is 71. So the tenth term is 71. Hence, the first five terms of the sequence with a sub n is equal to 7n plus 1 are 8, 15, 22, 29, and 36. And its tenth term is 71. You may try answering this activity. You may pause this video so that you could answer this activity on your paper. So give the general term of each sequence A, 4, 9, 14, 19, 24, B, 16, 13, 10, 7, 4, C, 1, 8, 27, 64. For number 2, Determine the first five terms and the twentieth term of the sequence with the given general term a a sub n is equal to five n and b a sub n is equal to three n plus seven. You can check if your answers are correct at the end of this video. Congratulations, grade 10! We are now done in lesson 1, number patterns.